If you've never played the original Odin Sphere on the PlayStation 2, do yourself a favor, stop watching this, and go purchase the game right away on either the PS4 or the PlayStation Vita, as it's an absolute gem. This remastered version has been completely overhauled, featuring new animations, gameplay tweaks, and it even includes the original version of the game for you purists out there. Seeing Gwendolyn, Cornelius, Mercedes, Oswald, and Velvet again nearly a decade after they made their debut on the PS2 back in 2007 really is a dream come true. Odin Sphere on the PS2 was a brilliant game, but it never lived up to its potential because of the tremendous frame rate slowdown and other inconsistencies with the combat system. The frame rate was by far the biggest problem but it has been fixed for the remaster and is almost always locked at 60 frames per second. Yes, it does have some dips here and there, but for the most part, it's damn near perfect. The graphics have also never looked as nice as they do here in beautiful 1080p. The audio is another area that is vastly improved over the original. And you trophy hunters out there will be happy to hear that the Platinum is a fun trophy to strive for and doesn't require too much backtracking or other silly objectives. Finally, I want to touch base on the cross-play, which is fantastic. There's nothing like playing this beautiful game on your HD TV while at home and then uploading your save to the cloud and continuing while you're on the go on the Vita. Now, unfortunately, it's not cross-buy compatible, meaning you need to actually purchase two copies of the game in order to experience the magic of playing this game on the go and while at home, and that's a real shame. The overall story might not be to all tastes, but I absolutely love the way all five fairy tales come together to form one interwoven tale. Characters who may be antagonists in one tale are suddenly protagonists in the next and only by piecing everything together can you truly finish the narrative. The tone is very whimsical and fantastical, which is what you'd expect from a fairy tale. As such, most of the twists and turns you'll probably see coming a mile away, but for some reason I was hooked from the very beginning all the way through until the end credits. I wasn't satisfied until I had solved Cornelius and Velvet's dire situation by attaining the quote-unquote complete ending. Exploration takes place on a 2D field, with new areas connected via branching paths. An extremely useful and detailed map is easily accessible by pressing in the trackpad. The map highlights key items in the current active screen. You'll be informed if there's a treasure chest, a new scroll you haven't read yet, uh, a Mori traveling chef bell, or other things like maybe a new piece of equipment. And speaking of Mori, He's a chef who travels the world and is your primary source of leveling. Mori takes in recipes you find and converts them into amazing looking meals. If you have the necessary ingredients, of course. Recipes are extremely useful not only for the restaurant, but for alchemy as well. Alchemy allows you to make all kinds of powerful potions that can be used for both offensive and defensive moves. You can throw out a blaze, cyclone, or a volcano eruption to damage enemies, or use an antidote to cure yourself. There are dozens of recipes you can learn, and some of the cooking ones reward incredible amounts of experience. The upgrade system is fairly standard for today, which allows you to unlock a wide assortment of magical attacks and passive abilities. These skills are unlocked by using magical orbs enemies drop when they're vanquished called Phosons. Players also gain skill points as they level up, which are used to unlock extremely useful skills such as being able to earn 20% more experience points from food, to being able to replenish your power meter quicker. Every level in the game is broken up into the exact same way. There are exploration scenes, combat scenes, rest scenes, a mid-boss, and finally a stage-ending boss. Each scene, screen, or area, however you'd like to call it, lasts for about a minute or two at most. That includes combat areas, as you'll often just have to tackle a cluster of enemies all at one time and then you're ranked in your performance. Depending on how quickly you dispatched enemies and how high you can raise your combo chain, you can unlock some spectacular goodies. You're awarded a ranking that determines which extras are granted once the area is cleared. The best rank you can get is an S rank, which always rewards you with a special valentine coin or coins, which are used in the Puka village to purchase special meals which once again boost your experience points and help you level up. Now speaking of combat, the new system is much more refined compared to that of the original. 
the power meter no longer depletes with standard attacks, save for Mercedes, and offensive spells no longer hurt you. This fundamentally changes the flow of the game and allows you to play more strategically than ever before. While the gameplay is spiced up by the inclusion of five unique characters, it does get a little bit repetitive because the core structure never changes. Fight some bad guys, explore a bit, fight a mid-boss, fight more baddies, cook a few new recipes, and then tackle the end boss. Repeat the exact same thing for seven chapters per character, and that's pretty much all she wrote. I mentioned this earlier that I was a little bit disappointed that cross-buy wasn't featured in this game. But to be fair, it's commonly not associated with retail releases such as this. But I do feel the game suffers a little bit because of it. Only because it's so amazing to be able to play at home and on your PlayStation Vita while you're away. So I'm not going to take any points off for that, but I surely would have added points to the score had it been included. I also have one slight missed opportunity with this game, and that is that while they included the original game with it, it would have been pretty cool to have had all of the updated bells and whistles in the audiovisual presentation, but have been able to use the original combat system. I think that would have been unique. I should also mention that the English voice acting really isn't to my taste, but thankfully the Japanese dialogue is present and I highly recommend you play the game like that. Overall, Odin Sphere on the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation Vita is a perfect example of how you do a remaster. It features refined gameplay, improved audio visuals, and is everything a fan could have asked for. The Storybook Edition on the PlayStation 4 is also a wonderful collector's set, including a t-shirt, beautiful art book, and more. Regardless of which version of the game you purchase, it comes highly recommended.